Hey everybody. Um, so I noticed from the last video that my uh, mic was extra scratchy and crackly, so I'm wearing headphones right now. And hopefully it'll be better. So I don't know. Headphones with a microphone. Like I know that I don't just put on headphones. Anyway. All right. So we're going to talk about sexualism today. Um, I'm going to try and get serious and get focused. Stay focused. That's the most important na thing. That's the name of the game. So this is actually part one of sectionalism. There's going to be part two parts, so I'm very sorry for that. But that should make it a little more manageable. And this is going to be everything before 1850. So this is like the real groundwork of sectionalism. So you're probably like, hey, what is sectionalism? You're out here saying all these words like I know what those mean. What are you thinking, Mr. Gone? I don't know what that means. But anyway, sectionalism is the idea that you're going to be more loyal to your region, or section is the word they use, that's where this word comes from, of the country than to the country as a whole. So nowadays, we think of ourselves as an American, then maybe as a Hoosier after that, then maybe as like a member of, or someone who lives in Johnson County after that. Back then, they would have really kind of done the opposite, and they would have thought of themselves as a member of the small community first, and then the state, or maybe even the state first, and then the region, and then... The finally as an American. So you would have been more loyal kind of to, and the Civil War is what's going to change that, but you would have been more loyal to your part of the country than to the country as a whole. And so you want your interests promoted above that of the other parts of the country. Um, and it's not necessarily a terrible thing to want that sometimes, but uh, when you're talking about these big decisions that have to be made with everyone kind of having input, it causes a lot of problems. So in the North, you want to push industry. You want to push free labor because they don't have slavery. And you want to push um, expansion to the West so that we can have land for uh, white families to basically start their own farms and have their own land. In the South, you want to push more agriculture, more states' rights and local government, less industry. And if you're expanding West, you want the land where you can do more cash crop agriculture, more of the same, um, and have more plantations spanning from sea to sea. That's the goal of the South as opposed to the North. All right? So that's what sectionalism is. Now I'm going to talk about a few events. This video will be mostly, though not all, review. The first one is the Missouri Compromise. Okay, that happened in 1820. So that's like um, 40 years before the Civil War even starts. And that actually keeps the peace for quite a while. Okay, Missouri wants to become a state. That would throw off the balance in the Senate. There's a careful balance between free and slave states in the Senate. So basically, you have two senators from every state. If you have the balance, you never have to pass any extreme laws either way. The other side can always block it. Um, and this kind of sparks almost a crisis that Missouri wants to be a slave state. And so luckily, Maine is chilling up in the north and doesn't like being a part of Massachusetts anymore, and so they get to become their own state. And then we even out the senator issue. We draw a line to the west from the bottom of Missouri that says anything in the future that becomes a state from here will, if it's from the south of this line, be a slave state to the north, be a free state. And that's going to really uh, keep the peace for quite a while. Um, and... Yeah, as long as that lasts, we don't have war. And once it starts to get undone, we have some major issues. Next, we talked about this with the presidency of Andrew Jackson. You have the nullification crisis. Uh, we've already covered that, but basically there was a tariff. North likes tariffs. South hates tariffs. And this tariff um, was nullified almost, or attempted to be nullified, I guess, by South Carolina. So South Carolina says, we don't have to follow federal laws if we don't like them. But if you just can choose which federal laws to follow, it's almost like you don't need a federal government, which is kind of, you know, the point of not having the Articles of Confederation, the point of being a union. So Andrew Jackson uh, threatens to march troops down there. Congress lowers the tariff and says it's fine if Andrew Jackson marches troops and uses them to collect uh, taxes in South Carolina. So South Carolina kind of backs down and the nullification crisis is averted, but it was like a little, you know, bump in the road. It was definitely when you notice one of these sectional tensions flare up, where things really get going. Is in the late 1840s, we have a war with Mexico. Um, I don't know if you knew this, but basically, we set out to have a war with Mexico, and we did. And we took a bunch of land that is now some pretty cool states, I guess. Whether it was the right thing to do or not, 
uh, a big part of Texas, Arizona, New Mexico, parts of Utah and Colorado, California, all are going to come from this war. That whole area is called the Mexican Session because we gain it from this war. And basically, the war is a relatively brief thing. You can look it up if you want. Um, but yeah, uh, the big debate is going to be what we do with this big chunk of land we have. Because most of it's in the south, and a lot of southerners are saying, hey, this is great land for cultivating cotton. This is great land for um, all sorts of other kind of cash crop things. Um, and they're even saying things like, you know, there's a gold rush happening in California. Maybe you could use slaves to excavate the gold. That'd be a pretty economical way of doing things. Northerners hate this, shockingly. <laughs> it's not shocking at all. And so they see that as like, if that's a future of slave states, that's a very bad thing. So they try and figure out all sorts of things. There's northern proposals that the whole thing should be free. There's thoughts that we should expand the Missouri Compromise Line, all these things. And none of it really can make it through Congress. So we get this idea, okay, called popular sovereignty. And I'm going to actually talk about the compromise in the next video that um, will solve, 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 or make worse, I guess, this issue. Um, solve the crisis if making the issue a little worse. But there's a concept you need to know before I even get into that video, and that's popular sovereignty. We talked about that with the... Um, Constitution as the idea that you should be able to choose your government, right? That is something very important to our Constitution, this idea of popular sovereignty. They took those words and they applied them to this concept. And some Northerners actually did kind of support this, and some Westerners supported this. Most Southerners maybe supported it. Uh, and it's the idea that when a territory wants to become a state, you get together and you vote on whether you will allow slavery or not. So now popular sovereignty, the definition is you vote as a territory when you become a state whether or not to have slavery. Um, and that is going to really, it, it sounds like letting people choose their local government. That doesn't sound bad until you realize all those local governments with the nature of our system send someone to the federal government. And that means that the balance is very important and this is like not looking after the balance. Anything can happen. We're going to see in the next video, bad things happen. Um, so yeah, I've talked about the next video about four times, so I should probably just be quiet and let you get to that. Um, so yeah, that is part one, the setup of sectionalism. We're going to talk about a lot of events next time. So just get ready for that and uh, have a great day.